Hey gardeners, Amy here with Garden Up. Today I'm going to talk about this weed right here. It is the bane of the pure grass lawn lovers. This is called crabgrass. There are potentially two species, Digitaria ischemum or Digitaria sanguinalis. So there are two types of crabgrass. Digitaria ischemum is also known as small crabgrass or narrow leaf crabgrass, and it is a smaller species with narrower leaves. It's also called shiny crabgrass because it's a little bit more shiny. This one I'm pretty sure is Digitaria sanguinalis, which is also called hairy crabgrass, hairy fingergrass, large crabgrass, crab fingergrass, and purple crabgrass because it's much larger and much hairier and there's a little bit of purple on the stems. Digitaria sanguinalis has long stems with broad, wider leaf blades with a fuzzy hair on the back, hence the name hairy crabgrass. It does tend to have a purple tinge to the stems close to the base. Any of the older stems might appear purple. Crabgrass is the common name for the genus of plants, Digitaria, that includes annual and perennial types of grass. The species generally have broad, flat blades and produce long flower clusters and thousands of seeds per growing season. Digitaria sanguinalis is an annual grass with an inflorescence of up to nine very long, very thin, radiating branches atop its stems. Each branch is lined with pairs of very tiny spikelets. The inflorescence may be reddish or purplish. All crabgrasses tend to grow outward rather than up like most grass. And at each joint, at each leaf joint, it has a potential to root. Crabgrass does not have underground creeping rhizomes. What it has is stems that can become stoloniferous. What that means is each stem, wherever it's touching the ground, if there's a node, it can grow its own roots. Digitaria eschemum is a species of crabgrass known by the common names smooth crabgrass and small crabgrass. It is also native to Europe and Asia, but is known throughout much of the warm temperate world as an introduced species, and often a common roadside and garden weed. It is an annual grass producing an inflorescence with two or more narrow branches lined with tiny spikelets. The life cycle of crabgrass is an annual grass. It lives for one season, it spreads its seeds, and returns the following year by seed. In the beginning stage, the crabgrass seedlings resemble miniature corn stalks. Then the leaves start to branch out. Crabgrass becomes more problematic in the summer because these weeds thrive in hot, dry weather. It is drought tolerant and is often the last green thing on the lawn before the late fall frost finally kills the stems. There are several ways to control crabgrasses, even in lawns. You could do a pre-emergent herbicide if you want to go that route and kill everything that's a seed. You could also do a selective herbicide that kills only crabgrass or broadleaf plants, but again, you have to have only a grass lawn if you're trying to grow clover or any other thing in your lawn. That is not the good solution. If you have a bare spot where crabgrass had taken over and you pull it out, reseed that with your desired grass or lawn alternative. Really, the most important thing to do is keep your lawn healthy to begin with. If a, your lawn is healthy and thick, other plants, weeds, and other things that you don't want are less likely to be able to get their seeds in the ground and take root and germinate successfully. You can hand pull large seedlings and you can remove dead crabgrass plants because that even the dead ones will smother the nearby grass. If it's a non-lawn area like your garden, utilize mulch. The best kind of mulch is arborist wood chips. They are the best at suppressing weeds while at the same time feeding and keeping the soil healthy and letting water through, unlike other mulches, which I can get into in another video. You could also try to use vinegar or boiling water. However, most of the, <laughs> there is no real science on vinegar or boiling water, and most of the success stories are anecdotal. Yes, they do tend to work, but they are contact only. Vinegar will kill anything green that it touches, but it won't kill the roots. Crabgrass, that's not as important as it's an annual weed with a fibrous root, so you're not really trying to get, you know, kill the whole root. It shouldn't come back. Uh, boiling water is supposed to kill the roots, but the thing is, both of those will also kill everything around it, everything else that it touches. 
So you're going to have a big dead patch in your lawn if you use those two, which is why I would highly recommend not using vinegar or boiling water in this instance. So if I did have a green grass lawn here that I was trying to weed out and protect, I would probably use a shovel to get this out. I really don't do much gardening in lawns. I, I do pull weeds out of it though. But if you use a shovel, you just come a few inches away from the base and you should be able to extricate these roots from the roots of your Kentucky bluegrass or your fescue or your rye or whatever your lawn is if you just loosen up the soil around this. So I want to find the center, put my shovel a couple inches away, and pull all this up. If Again, if it's in a grass lawn, you're going to have to do that on probably at least three sides to loosen it up well enough to do this. There's probably about 20 individual plants all clustered together in here, but you get the idea. You got to pull up the whole thing out of your grass, which that's going to be tricky. Okay, so you're going to find the center of the weed, put your shovel a few inches away so you don't cut the roots, but instead you, you dig right next to them. And if this is in a lawn, you're going to need to do this with a shovel on probably at least three sides to loosen it up enough to be able to pull this up and get it out of the rest of the grass roots. There we go. All right, you could also try a garden fork. What this will do is loosen the soil around the roots without actually cutting through the soil and cutting the roots. And again, in a grass lawn situation, this might be an easier way to tackle this. I have both species. Look at that. <laughs> wow. This is the shiny one. This is the hairy one. So thanks for watching this video, everybody. If you learned something and you liked it, make sure to tell me by hitting the like button. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. And if you have not already subscribed, please do that. So you get more gardening content like this in your video feed every week. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you in the garden.